Hey everyone, welcome back to the uh, Seller Growth Podcast, Thursday edition. I got Chris Gramlich uh, here with uh, Sellozo. We're going to be talking about seven ways to build your brand on Amazon. What's up, Chris? Good to see you. Man. How you doing? Doing good, Rob. Nice to see you too. Quite the quite the production you got going on here. Yeah, yeah. Change it up to production quite a bit here on uh, the Seller Growth Podcast. So every week, got a little something different. But uh, today, this is a good one. Uh, so a lot of people selling on Amazon, they come on, watch the show, and you've got seven steps for building a brand on Amazon. Luckily, Chris gave me the cheat sheet, so I appreciate that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and I actually got to read it. This came off a great article that you guys did, uh, and uh, I definitely want to dive deep into this. So step number one, Chris, we're going to dive right into this. So everybody, uh, please be sure to hit that like and subscribe. And any questions along the way, put them in the comments section, and uh, Chris and I will be happy to uh, answer those and get things going. So uh, first step, step number one, let's dive into this. Uh, research your audience and your competitors. Take it away, Chris. Tell us about yeah, it. Yeah, and now is more important than ever to have a brand on Amazon. We're, we're seeing money being poured in to this space, and people are buying brands, and aggregators are coming in and just taking up brands. So the day of like launching you know, mismatched products and you know spatulas and, and dog treats and brushes, like it, it, you're better off building a brand. So when you when you find a product, that you're going to that you want to launch around it. You want to know the audience you're going to launch it to. So when you're doing that, uh, you want to find out where they hang out at. Like, do they hang out on Facebook groups or are they on Instagram or Pinterest? Like, find out where your audience is because when you launch more products, you're going to launch to that audience, and you want to build your you kind of want to build your own audience as well and, and bring them into your funnel so that when you do have a product idea, you can go to that audience and say, "What do you think of this?" or "What." What would you change here? Um, so having an audience now is super, super important, especially as you, if you're going to plan on exiting your Amazon business in the long run. Um, so that's kind of changed in, in the past year or two where people were just launching products. Now it's more like come, come to Amazon with the exit in mind, know your audience, find a good product that you want to launch to that audience, and just rinse and repeat. So you're constantly launching products to this audience which is going to help your ranking um, and, and so forth. So know where your audience hangs out at, know your competitors, see what they're doing, model what they're doing to kind of your listing um, and just continue to, you know, nurture that audience, give them good content, you know, do blogs, all that kind of stuff. Cause when you exit that audience is going to go with that, with that exit. And that's just going to add more valuation to your, to your Amazon business. Yeah. Great information there. And that's absolutely true, right? Build that, Build that business to sell. I mean, why not? That's that, everybody's uh, looking to probably do that. There's, I mean, we, you and I both know a lot of people in the industry right now, and the, and that's like a big thing, especially now. The uh, was it the uh, margin factor of selling your company is going up quite a bit this year with Amazon being uh, you know crazy right now. So great information. And once again, everybody, I got Chris Gramlich from Sellozo. Seven steps for building a brand on Amazon, and uh, we're going to keep going. And again, if you got any questions. Please, uh, you know, log on in or post those questions in the comment section. Chris and I will get to it. And we do have lots of highs coming in. Hi to everybody. We appreciate you tuning in and uh, joining us today. Uh, so, Chris, uh, step number two, tell us about find your business name and slogan. Now, this is a tough one. I've had several businesses coming up with a business name and a slogan. That's rough. So step us through what you mean by this and uh, what, you know, give us some examples. Yeah, this is getting tough too because there's trademarks being issued now and and you, and you don't want to step on anybody's toes when you make a brand name because you don't want to put in jeopardy your Amazon account. So uh, there's tools out there to use and, and to kind of get brand ideas and brand generation ideas. Uh, one that I've been, this personal preference of mine that I've been using a lot is, is a, a tool called Brand Bucket. Brand Bucket just gives you a bunch of ideas on names that you can go out and and they give you kind of uh, you know, industry names, color names, generate brand names. And, and this is where you just kind of come up with your ideas, write them down, and then you know ask your friends and family what they think. Or, or go to that audience and say, look, I'm trying to launch a brand. We're trying to come up with a brand name. Which brand name do you like? Um, I've seen this before where uh, people will come up with a brand name and then they come up with a, like a logo. We'll talk about that here in a few seconds. 
And then they just send out a survey to that to that audience and say, what do you guys think? What what catches your eye? And, and then use that to you know scale up your brand. So um, there's tools out there. I like the tool called Brand Bucket. It's a it's, I'm not affiliated with them at all. It's just it's I like it personally because they give you a list of brands that you can uh, brand names that are available out there, and you can you know buy the domains and and see if they're trademarked or not. Um, and then other ones ideas out there is just go to brand name generators and, and come up with an idea. If you have an idea that you like and you if you come up with the brand name that you that you want to stick with. Go see if it's trademarked. If it's not trademarked, start that process now because we're going to touch on some more of that. But you want to start that process now to get that that name uh, trademarked because that's going to help you in the long run, especially with uh, with Amazon and all the things you can do with brands there. Yeah, absolutely. So don't go look up that name yet. <laughs> Stay on the <laughs> podcast with us, everybody. So yeah. I'll make sure that in the notes section of the uh, video that we will have all the names that uh, Chris has given out here for like the brand bucket and things like that. Again, we're both not affiliated with them, but stay here with us. You definitely want to hear more information because we're only on step two of seven. So uh, <laughs> once again, welcome everybody to the Seller Growth Podcast. I got Chris Gramlich we're talking about seven steps for building your brand on Amazon. And we're only on step number two. And we got a ways to go. Uh, feel free to post any comments, which will create a question for us if you have any questions along the way. So yeah, let's let's jump right in, and and I think I'm gonna add something to this next one when we get to when we get to the logos. That's a little bit later. When we get yeah. to the logos, I'll throw some more stuff in there. But for step number three, Chris has defined step number three is define your brand identity. So that's not easy either, Chris. Uh, again, I've done a couple businesses. I've sold a couple businesses. <laughs> Coming up with these names and stuff, and and logos and slogans, and those those aren't easy. So. What, what's your sort of thing on on define your brand identity? What do you how do you go about doing that in your steps? Yeah, and this is going to be more based off like the, the product. Why is your product mm. better than the competitors? Like, what's your identity of the product? Do you have a new feature to it? Like, did you add something different? Or is it a better material? Or is it uh, made in the USA? Or whatever it is, get that identity and make it front and center so that people that come to your brand or that come to your product. They know that this is what you stand for. This is how my product is different. And, and again, you, you, you're gonna use your competitors to find this. Like when you go do your product research and you're looking at your competitors listings, uh, go look at the Q and A section. And, and when somebody, when customers type in questions in there, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for why that product is different. Is this made in the USA? Or is this made out of better plastic or whatever that is? That's where you can kind of get that identity there and that you can take that and put it for your own product. And then you want to display that and shout it on the mountaintops. This is why our product's better. And just continue to live by that. Or, or if it's um, maybe you make a donation every month to a, to a, uh, a nonprofit or something. Maybe you're just kind of taking donation and you're making a donation away. Like make that your story. Like get that identity. Let's, let's bring that in and let people relate to it. Um, so when you're doing that, you know, you got the name, you know, the audience, now you got to bring the identity in. This is what your brand stands for. And you want to make sure you display that front and center. This is what we do. This is our mission. This is what so people can understand that. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big fan of Shark Tank and, uh, you know, they're always talking about, they want to know, you know, what's their brand identity? Like, you know, is their cause? Are they donating something? So I, it's really interesting you brought that up because that is a good point. And uh, I feel like those are kind of going that direction more, don't you, Chris? Like uh, people want to know the story about the brand, how it's maybe helping some, how it's helping you, uh, how did it get started? And it doesn't always have to be like you're donating. It could just be a good story. Like, Heck, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to take, I could take up the whole podcast telling you a whole background story on how I got started. And it's kind of a crazy story, but you know, it's also one of those ones that people can identify with. I kind of fell into my business, you know, I got lucky and it was yeah. like, but you know, built it up from there. But that's, a, that's a great, that's a great point is definitely have that story, have that brand identity around it. Uh, so yeah, that's step number three. So everybody, uh, once again, hit that like, and subscribe. We really do appreciate you joining us. Uh, on here on the Seller Growth Podcast. And let's go on to step number four. So step number four, when creating a brand, he's looking at his notes. <laughs> when creating a brand, <laughs> so am I. Uh, so Chris, when creating a brand, colors that match your product. Why don't you uh, elaborate a little more on that for us today? Yeah, this is this is kind of where it gets fun because you can make your logo design and and get, kind of figure out where you want to be out as far as colors. 
Uh, so this is where you want to make sure your colors portray like your your brand messaging. You know, uh, there's there's types of like red is really powerful and like an like an anger feeling and really dominant and like blue is more like a calm and so you kind of want to know where you're at far that you don't want to send the wrong message with the niche you're in so again this is where i like split testing like split test what your colors are going to be uh what your brand is going to be standing for so an example of this would be you know maybe you come up with a brand name and you got the audience and you're using like a facebook group and or you go to a facebook group and and uh and let's say it's uh, you know moms, uh, stay-at-home moms, and you go to that group and you're like, hey, I'm, I'm coming out with this product. Uh, would like a quick feedback on it. You're not pitching them anything, but you're you're trying to get some feedback on, on what what the color should be or what the brand name should be. And that alone will just get you some really quick data where you could say, all right, they like this or they didn't like this design or this color goes better here. You're gonna allow them to tell you what they like. And then you just implement that with the with the logo and the colors that you want to go with, make a few tweaks to it, go back to that audience and, and show them what you've done and, and just continue to tweak it till you really get it dialed in. Uh, Cause that, that's what you're going to go with. That's what's going to be on all your packaging. That's what's going to be on your social media. That's what's going to be on your inserts. Like all that stuff is going to be long-term. So you want to make sure you get this right. And the way to get it right is again, go to those audiences, go find out where they hang out, go survey them. Ask them what they like. Ask them what colors they they like here, and, and just continue to to nurture that logo and make it better and better and better. And then once you find something you like, stick with it and, and ride it off. And, and then you want to make sure that that's all over your branding, your packaging, your social media, all that, because that's what's that's what's gonna people are gonna resonate with when they go to Facebook and they see an ad and it has your logo on it. That's what they're gonna resonate with that brand. So that's that's what I would do. Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. And, and that's some of the steps I took uh, with, when I was trying to figure out my branding and my names of my old businesses. I mean, back then we had, it was almost more like bulletin boards, but, uh, you know, it's kind of <laughs> the, the replacement is the Google or the uh, Facebook groups now is like the old uh, bulletin boards. But uh, yeah, that's that's great because, you know, you can get some free information, free help from there, you know, and, and you can test market some things. Heck, uh, I mean, I've had plenty of people on the show that they go in on these uh, Facebook groups and they come up with uh, ideas on new products just based on what they're seeing uh, stories of issues that people run into. Like maybe it's a dog thing and, you know, somebody ran into an issue and all, all of a sudden there's a new dog product or, you know, pet product. So, yeah, great, great info there, Chris. So, hey, everybody, real quick. So I know you all know by now that uh, Crew Me obviously sponsors the Seller Growth Podcast. I'm Chief Marketing Officer Rob Stanley for Crew Me. And I think there's been a little bit of mis disconnect from people understanding exactly a Crew Me. So, you know, I'm always... Uh, promoting, we got little commercials and everything, telling everybody, hey, three minutes to get an instant funding estimate. And I think there's a little disconnect that maybe people think that we're going to ask you for your bank information or sign a personal guarantee. Look, at, it's pretty simple. The three minute instant funding estimate I keep talking about over at crewme.com is literally like seven questions. And it's more about your business. So we can just kind of figure out how much you might qualify for. We're not asking for your bank information. We're not asking for uh, you know you to commit to anything at that point. So head on over to accrumi.com, fill out the free three-minute instant funding estimate. Look at, I just did the commercial, so there we go. We're all set. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for that. And uh, we'll get right back to here to Chris. Uh, we still got lots to go. So once again, Rob Stanley, I got Chris Gramlich from Celozo talking about the seven steps for building a brand on Amazon. And uh, let's see, where are we? <laughs> I kind of lost my spot. Okay, step, step five. five. I think we're on step five. Step five. I had to look at my cheat sheet here. So step five. Start thinking about your logo. Okay, here's what we, we're going to dive into this one a bit for sure. I mean, logos are so hard. I, I actually, on my old company, I went out and I paid a place to do my logo and didn't really like it. And it was actually, they're still around. This is a pretty big company. They're still around. And uh, I went back to them, tried a few different times. What ended up happening actually is I took a slight design that they made and made my own out of it. And luckily, I know Photoshop and things like that, so it worked out for me. But uh, Chris, tell us about you know when uh, when you're thinking about your logo, kind of what do you start with, and what should you be looking for? Yeah, this is crucial because you don't want to make something or you don't want to create a logo that's similar to like a big branded logo out there because that's just only going to get in trouble in the long run. So creating the logo, you want to make it easy so that people resonate, they can understand what it means. When they see the logo, they know it, and they can. This is what this product is about. So, 
Now, doing the logo right, I, I would, again, you know, use your friends and family to to kind of get an idea off of, or there's tools out there you can go check out and, and kind of get a logo design, or there's services out there you can even hire. They'll make you logo designs. And then again, you're going to lo- you're going to use your your audience that you're building or the groups, the Facebook groups that your people are hanging out in. You're going to go back to that group and display a logo and it's like, which one do you like better? Now, all this needs to be done probably with you know, contacting the admin of the group and just saying, look, I'm trying to get some feedback, trying to start something here and, and maybe that will let you in. But there's tons of Facebook groups out there so that you should have no problem doing this. But you just want to you know, go ask them again. And, and what you're doing is you're just you're building trust, right? You're, you're going to that group. Here's what I'm trying to do. Here's what I'm trying to do. Here's I got a logo. Here's my colors. Here's my design. Here's my product. Like, you're starting to get in their mind a little bit more. And then when you get this logo, you want to go get it. You want to make sure that it's not anywhere close to any other trademark out there. I, I talked to a couple of sellers and, and, and the guy, he was doing well. And then all of a sudden his product went on page one. It was ranking really well. And then a big brand came in and said his logo looks too similar to theirs. And it basically shut him down for, for a while. I think he even lost the lawsuit. So you don't want to go that route. You want to you want to make sure your logo is is not something that's going to be a copyright infringement or any of that stuff because you don't want to mess with that in the long run. So when you get a design, go you know talk to an attorney or a lawyer or whatever and make sure that, that that's right because you don't want to have to deal with that in the long run. Um, and then you know use your audience to to get those designs. So you can tell we're we're using other people's advice and we're using other people's. Uh, input to create the brand because that's the audience we want to go to. That's what we're going to launch products to. It's going to be easier to launch products to this audience in the future because you've already nurtured them. So again, I, I harp on it, but just you know, use your audience to your advantage because it's going to help you with your products, especially launching new ones in the long run. There. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, so I mean, you can see we're building up here. We're building up all the information. We're giving you all the background information on things to do. Uh, and how many times, Chris, do we see somebody just goes, finds a project, throws up on Amazon, it blows up. They don't have a brand name, really. They kind of created something. They don't have a logo. They don't have anything built out around it. And now they have to backtrack. They almost have to like step back. And some of these processes can take a little time. You know, some of these things that Chris is talking about, I mean, even a logo, it takes a little time on a logo. Now, everybody hang tight real quick. Do not click on this link yet. But one of the places, obviously, if you get a logo done, you can take a look at PicFu. Just had PicFu on a couple of weeks ago. That's a great place to go. Go check out the video I did with them or the podcast slash video I did with them with PicFu on how to basically take your logo, get feedback, be able to redo it and get more feedback and then come up with a final logo that's just amazing that at least you, uh, in you know, you, like Chris said, you could always start with friends and family to narrow it down to a couple and then maybe take it over to them. So I just got to throw that out there, but stay here with us because we've got more information uh, obviously coming up. So again, I got Chris Gramlitz from Solozo talking about seven steps for building an Amazon brand or a brand on Amazon. So like Chris and I just said, all these things lead up to something. So next step, steps number six, Amazon brand registry. You have to do the things we're talking about before you do the brand registry. So you got to go dive into that, Chris. I don't need to take uh, all the information because, you know, I'll just sit here and talk. So go ahead, Chris. <laughs> yeah. And to touch base real quick on PickFood, definitely use that service. Go check out PickFood. They're awesome. It, it's a great yeah. service to split test things. So I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. So, okay. Brand registry. I would even, now that Amazon is going to give you brand registry with a pending trademark, this may be step like two. So if you get a, if you have a brand name and it's already going to be, uh, you already got the trademark in and you get a pending trademark number go do it now, go send it into Amazon and, and sign up for brand registry because they are now giving uh, brand names that have a pending trademark, you will now get access to brand registry. So that's a recent thing. So, um, you know, if, you're, if you've got a brand already figured out and it's not trademarked and you've already done it and it's pending, go go head over to brand registry. But what brand registry is going to give you is access to more tools. And what we're seeing in tools by, I mean, like advertising tools, content tools, uh, different types of often often on Amazon uh, access videos. Like there's a lot of stuff that Amazon's doing and they're transitioning a little bit more. So uh, we're seeing them give more access to brands to like advertising portals or to listing optimization ideas or in any new beta feature that Amazon rolls out, people who are in brand registry, they're going to get it first. So it's, it's going to be best for you and your business to get in there right away. So brand registry, super simple to set up. 
you simply just pr provide the the ID. You tell the brand name. You have to have a little bit of a website there. They'll show you the website, and then you'll get access to brand registry. And now your account is going to be open to all these things that like video ads, A plus content, uh, post. Like there's a bunch of stuff, and you're going to be the first to know. And the the people that act first are going to be the ones that get in. They're going to be the trailblazers. They're going to be the ones that get the cost per click super cheap. So I, I can't harp on it even more. I would probably even move this up the page a little bit because it, it's it's something that's going to give your business, your Amazon business, more access to tools that you can market your products with. And it's, I think it's only going to get better in the long run. We're seeing it. I'm, Rob, I'm sure you are too. Amazon's starting to favor brands a little bit more and more every time. Yeah, yeah. So real quick, everybody, we, we definitely appreciate those likes and subscribes. If you're watching us on YouTube, down in the corner is a little, I think it's a white and red thumbs up. We'd appreciate if you hit that subscribe to our channel so you get a pop-up when uh, basically we go live. Yeah, thanks, Chris. And uh, of course, if you're watching us on uh, Facebook, hit that, you know, hit that like. And uh, so I'm not sure if the comment section working. So if anybody's out there, hit us up in the comment section and hit us up with a quick question or just say hi or something so we make sure everything's working. And, uh, you know, but before we do that real quick, real quick, Chris, and before we come back with the final step, number seven, which is a good one. And we're in this one, I think it's going to be a little more deep. We're going to have to, you know, stick onto this one a little longer. Uh, we do have a quick commercial from our sponsor, Kurumi, right here. This content is brought to you by Akrumi, the business friendly funding solution for Amazon sellers. If you're a profitable Amazon seller looking for capital to grow your profits, click the link around this video or visit accrueme.com for a no risk funding estimate in less than three minutes. Yeah, so if you do head on over to Accrueme, please mention the podcast. I really do appreciate that. Uh, you know, it does justify us being on the air and having everybody on and keeping this going. So, uh, yeah, take a look at accrueme.com, check out the Accrueme calculator, ROI calculator. And make sure you hit that uh, you know three minute instant funding. Like I said earlier, there's no commitment there. Just click on it, and get an instant funding estimate. So, Chris, we're uh, you know uh, let me reintroduce. I got Chris Gramlich here on the Seller Growth Podcast, and today we're talking about the seven steps to building a brand on Amazon. We're just about ready to hit number seven. Didn't see any comments come in, so if you guys could leave a comment real quick, just to make sure our uh, question section is working, and we don't have maybe a little error or something, but we're gonna keep going. So, Chris, step number seven promoting your new brand. Wow. That, that could almost be an entire show, Chris, as you yeah. know. So yeah, this could be, <laughs> this could be an entire topic. <laughs> yes. And hopefully we'll get some questions on this one. So go ahead, Chris, why don't you uh, take off with promoting your brand or your new brand? Yeah. And I mentioned it a little bit back on, on step six is it's advertising, right? You're, you're, you're going to build a moat around your brand. And, and what that means is you're going to start ads everywhere on your, on your, on your listings. So you can protect your brand now, if you got one product, it's going to be kind of tough to do that. But as you grow and as you launch more products, you're going to want to protect your brand and start advertising your similar products on a, on your other pages. And that's what that's what we're doing here is we're going to advertise heavily for brand uh, for your brand name because you'll be surprised. It may not happen like you know the first couple of months, but as you start to sell more and more product, people are going to start typing in your brand name into Amazon, and you want to make sure your product is showing up for that. You don't want your competitors to come in. And, and start stealing your real estate for your branded terms. So advertising is going to be super, super important because that's the way you're going to get discovered. And especially if you have a product that is like a repeat buy, like a subscribe and save, it's even more important to get that, get that subscribe at the very beginning because they're going to be a long-term customer. So get in the front, get in front of that traffic, go after those keywords that you want to go after for your main product. Do big targeting ads, you know, do exact match key campaigns and, and heavy bids. And, and what you're doing at the very beginning, it's an investment, right? And, and this is what we, you know, we talk about all the time is you're investing to get your product in front of the traffic that is on Amazon. And, and in the long run, it's going to be helpful. But what you're going to do is you're increasing your organic ranking for your product. And the more you get sales through the ad, the more your product moves up the organic ranking. You start to get sales through organic ranking, not just on the ad anymore. You start to get repeat purchases. You guys you get customer awareness or brand awareness. So advertising now, especially on Amazon, I mean, if anybody who sells on Amazon knows that there's ads everywhere. And it's important to do that because that just gets that flywheel moving. And, it, and that's what you need to get your product ranked higher. And it allows you to launch more products and build an audience and launch to that list. So advertising is a must. 
Um, if you're not advertising, you're missing out and you're probably not selling as much as you could. So I encourage you know brands out there to especially start advertising. There's a lot of things out there you can do on and off Amazon with advertising. Sponsor brand video is a, is a one that I'm, I'm really bullish on right now because it just converts like crazy. Uh, video is something new to Amazon. And when customers are searching through Amazon and they see a video ad, they immediately get the click and nine times out of 10, it converts. So if you're not doing video ads and you need brand registry, like we talked about earlier, you need brand registry to get that video ad, um, you know, start running those now because you're, you're going to see your conversion rate go up. More sales will come in and hopefully you'll start to get more reviews and, and so on. So you can see it's just a, it's a, it's a life cycle, right, Rob? Like you constantly have to continue to go with the flywheel to continue to increase your sales. So advertising is super, super important. Yeah, that, that's a hundred percent true. So, you know, kind of piggybacking off that, I suggest people also go take a look at some of the, my older podcasts. I'm, I'm I talking older, I'm talking like a week ago, right? <laughs> had Sam or Brax talking about how to get influencers for free. Uh, don't leave now though, because we still are still covering a lot of good information here, but uh, look at some of the older shows. I mean, there's definitely some great information. Uh, Dave had a question come in. So Dave, uh, Dave was asking about a couple of the companies and websites we're talking about. I'm going to make it real simple for you, Dave. <laughs> this is how easy it is now. You just head on over to accrue me. I've got the podcast information over there. I've got the show notes over there. I got the description over there. I got contact information for Chris over there. So anything you need regarding the show, and if it's not there, it's pretty simple. Rob at accrueme.com. Just email me. That's uh, pretty simple. I'll be happy to either answer it for you or get you the information on the show if you missed it. So everybody who's come in maybe a little bit late, I'm just going to cover real quick. I'm Rob Stanley, Chief Market Officer for Accrueme. Welcome again uh, to the Seller Growth Podcast. I got Chris Gramlich of Sellozo, and we've just been talking about the seven steps for building a brand on Amazon. And if you did come in late, I'm going to go over those steps real quick with you. And if we miss something, Chris, be sure to jump in there and uh, you know we'll add more, right? So yeah, step number one, research your audience and your competitors. We definitely covered that. And that was great information on, and in fact, you even uh, a couple extra times mentioned about uh, you know checking on that. Number two, step number two, find your business name and slogan. That's a big one. And that could take a while. Chris gave some great tips on that. And again, we'll post uh, some links and stuff and information about where to go. Uh, define your brand identity as step number three. Uh, step number four, when creating a brand using colors that match your product. I think that's a great one uh, to build off around that. Step number five, start thinking about your logo. Wow, we, we definitely covered that one quite a bit. And again, <laughs> for that one, go back and look at my at the other older podcasts. Uh, take a look, go over to creamy.com, find the podcast section, and there you go. Step number six, uh, Amazon brand registry. And then finally, step number seven, we just talked about promoting your new brand. So, wow, we covered quite a bit there and that's some great info. So Chris, I uh, really appreciate you being on and going all over all this information with me and helping out everybody. I mean, that's really what we both do podcasts for. It's all about really helping the audience and the sellers and people out there to connect with you know these different uh, people that have information because everybody has something a little different. Sounds like your dog's getting mad there, Chris. So <laughs> we'll have you go check on your dog and uh, we're going to probably wrap it up right here. So once again, Chris uh, Gramlich from Sellozo, I appreciate you being on the Seller Growth Podcast and anybody who m missed it or want to rewatch it, head on over to accrueme.com, check out the podcast section and you can look at some of the older ones. Chris, I appreciate you being on the uh, Seller Growth Podcast. Thanks so much. Oh, I think you had a little hiccup there. <laughs> hey, <laughs> sorry, again, Rob. Yeah. No, it's okay. Thanks again for being on. Take care. Yep, see ya. Bye.